it contains one or two lymph nodes, which is called to be the supraesternal lymph node. So an anterior cervical node often occupies the supraesternal space. Now the supraesternal space is nothing, but it is the space above the sternum, upper border of the sternum, in between the two layers of the deep cervical fascia, which is lying anterior part of the deep cervical fascia, just above the sternum. So the lymph from tissue of the head and neck, internal to the deep fascia, drains to the deep cervical lymph nodes directly or through again the outlying groups of the that include the retropharyngeal we have discussed behind the pharynx, paratracheal on the sides of the trachea, lingual that is the tongue infrahyoid that is pre-laryngeal, pre-tracheal and the infrahyoid which belongs to the thyroid gland region. So these are the drained by the deep cervical fascia. Now the deep lymphatic, cervical lymphatic nodes lie alongside the carotid sheath and form a superior and the inferior groups. We discussed in the internal jugular vein. Now this is the internal jugular vein. You can see this is the superior group, this is the middle group, and this is the inferior group. And these are belonging uh, along with the carotid sheath because the carotid artery is this, which is running over here. This is the carotid artery. and this is the internal jugular vein and this is the phrenic nerve which is passing behind them. So these are the two structures which are covered mainly the artery, not the vein because vein lies outside. It cannot be contained in a you know, tight sheet because it cannot dilate when there is an increased venous flow. So the veins, they lie mostly outside the sheaths because of the dilatation when there is an increased blood flow. So artery can pulsate, but the vein cannot. So that's why the nature has provided the loose aerolar tissue around the larger veins so that they can dilate when there is increased blood flow. So the carotid sheath does not completely or very firmly covers the carotid, this uh, in, uh, internal jugular vein. So these are the lymph nodes which are lying along the carotid sheath are along the internal jugular vein and these are the deep cervical lymph nodes. Now we are coming to the deep, so, uh, deep cervical lymph nodes which is the superior. So the superior deep cervical lymph nodes adjoin the upper part of the internal jugular vein we discussed the most are deep to the esternopelidomastite. If we see then this lies just underneath. Now this this muscle is the esternocleidomastoid. It is the mastoid process over here just behind the uh, ear. So this is the mastoid process where from this muscle is getting attachment. So esternoid, esternoid mastoid process. So this muscle we have cut over here. So the superficial or superior group of the lymph nodes belonging to the deep cervical lymph nodes is just beyond, below or underneath or deep to the esternocleidomastoid upper part. So most are deep to the esternocleidomastoid, but a few extend beyond it. So they can be anterior or posterior to this muscle. One subgroup consisting, now this one subgroup consisting of the one large and the several similar lymph nodes in a triangular region bounded by posteriorly the belly of the diagnostic and facial and internal jugular veins known as the jugular diagnostic group. Now this is the jugular diagnostic group which is lying just this is the jugular diagnostic group which is just lying in between the posterior belly of the diagnostic and the anterior and the posterior this uh, internal jugular vein so there are the triangle which is formed over here and we we will discuss into the anterior and the posterior triangles of the neck in detail so this is the group which is lying into this triangle which is bounded by this now it is con concerned especially with the drainage of the tongue 
So this is very, very important that the jugular digestive group of the lymph nodes, which is belonging to the floor of the oral cavity, bounded by the possibility of the digestive and the jugular vein, internal jugular vein, and the facial vein. So there is a triangle which is formed by the possibility of the digestive, by the internal jugular vein, and the facial vein. So this triangle is lying just at the floor of the uh, oral cavity outside and this jugular digestive group of the lymph nodes is especially for the drainage of the tongue. So we will discuss and again with the tongue when we are discussing the tongue. So these efferents from this go to the deep cervical lymph nodes. So the tongue is a drainage by this jugular digestive group of the lymph nodes into the deep cervical lymph nodes which belong to the upper part of the deep cervical lymph nodes. So the superior group of the deep cervical or upper group of the deep cervical lymph nodes, they are getting drainage from the jugular digestic and the jugular digestic is draining the tongue. Now, inferior deep cervical nodes, the inferior deep cervical lymph nodes are partly deep to the esthenocleidomastoid because this is the larger muscle which is exiting from the mastoid process above and is inserted down covering the carotid sheath and most of the structures in the floor of the posterior and the anterior triangles. So this is going down. So inferior deep cervical nodes, they are mostly hidden behind this muscle and some outline groups may be anterior or posterior to the muscle. So partly particularly related to the lower part of the internal jugular vein. Some are closely related to the brachial plexus and subclavian vessels. Now the subclavian vessels and the brachial plexus that is for the upper limb on the right as well as on the left side. So when these veins are, they are going out, leaving the low root of the neck, so certain groups are lying with this subclavian vein. So these groups are also the inferior deep cervical lymph nodes, which belong to the subclavian group also. So the sum are closely related to the brachial plexus and the subclavian vessels. The jugular omohyoid. Now again, the jugular vein and the omohyoid muscle. Now the omohyoid muscle arises from the hyoid bone goes down and has got the two bellies. So this omo jugular omohyoid is the angle formed in between the jugular vein and the omohyoid muscle. Node lie on or just above the intermediate tendon of the omohyoid. Omohyoid has got the two bellies. One is the superior and one is the inferior. So the junction is in the post and uh, anterior tendon. With this posterior triangle of the neck, so the tendon lies into that. So it is in between just at the tendon, common tendon of the omohyoid. And is concerned especially with the lymphatic drainage from the tongue. So this is again jugular omohyoid continuous from the jugular digastric group of the lymph nodes. The efferent from this lower group join the jugular lymph trunk. Now the efferent from the right side we have already discussed that they go to the jugular lymph trunk and on the left side they go to the lymphatic duct. So these are going to drain ultimately through the jugular lymph trunk into the subclavian junction. So now the retropharyngeal nodes which were at the base of the skull along with the pharynx, sorry, larynx, pharynx. So at the base of the skull, these were the nodes which were draining the pharyngeal valves. The retropharyngeal nodes lie between the pharyngeal and the prevertebral fascia. Now pharyngeal and the prevertebral fascia, the cervical vertebra anteriorly are covered by the muscles and these muscle groups are named as the pre-vertebral group of the muscles. Now, these pre-vertebral group of the muscles, 
extends from the base of the skull, atlas, and axis and goes down up to the lower border of the fourth thoracic vertebra. So these muscles extending from the base of the skull, covering anteriorly the cervical fascia and the vertebra, reaches up to the upper four thoracic vertebra, also the lower border. And all these muscles anteriorly are covered by a fascia, thick fascia. And this thick fascia is very important and it is named as the pre-vertebral fascia. So this pre-vertebral fascia is starting at the base of the skull, covering the pre-vertebral muscles and going down up to the fourth thoracic vertebra. So it enters into the thorax from the root of the neck. So this pre-vertebral fascia posteriorly covers the pre-vertebral muscles and anteriorly to it lies the pharynx and then esophagus lower down. So these are the structures which are lying anterior to the pre-vertebral fascia. And in the neck, if we see, then there is the larynx, there is the pharynx, there is the trachea. So all these structures, they are lying. Along with the trachea, there is the thyroid cartilage and the thyroid gland also. So anterior to the pre-vertebral fascia, these structures, they are also covered by the fascia. And this fascia is named according to these. So retropharyngeal nodes lie between pharyngeal and the pre-vertebral fascia. So the deep cervical fascia in the neck, that is going to give contributions to almost all the structures of the neck or the viscera of the neck. So the parotid fascia, the thyroid fascia, the pretracheal fascia, the pre-vertebral fascia, these all fascia, they are the contributions or the parts of the deep cervical fascia. So the retropharyngeal nodes, they lie between pre-pharyngeal, sorry, pharyngeal and the pre-vertebral fascia and form a median and the two lateral groups. So the lateral, that is the lateral or the anterior to the lateral masses of the atlas along the lateral borders of the longus capitus. Now this longus capitus is the pre-vertebral muscle. The nodes receive afferent from the nasopharynx, that is the nasal cavity and the pharynx. The pharyngeal tympanic tube and the atlanto occipital and the atlanto axial joints and drain to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. Now this retropharyngeal nodes, they receive afferent from these areas and then drain to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes which are along with the internal jugal vein. Now the paratracheal nodes which lie onto the sides of the trachea, the paratracheal nodes flank both trachea and the esophagus because anteriorly lies the esophagus and, and trachea and posteriorly lies the esophagus in the neck. They are the midline structures. So anteriorly in the median plane lies the trachea and posteriorly the esophagus. So these two structures are lying in the midline below the hyoid bone and they are having the lymph nodes on each side and that are named as the paratracheal lymph nodes. Para means sides and trachea means trachea. So the paratracheal nodes flank cover. Flank means they are uh, handling on the both sides the trachea and the esophagus along the recurrent laryngeal nerve. Now this recurrent laryngeal nerve goes towards the larynx from below upwards. So this is the nerve or branch of the vagus nerve which goes down and then comes up. That's why its name is recurrent. Means again against the current. So it comes back. So it takes a U-turn from below up to supply the larynx. So recurrent laryngeal nerve. So these recurrent laryngeal nerves, they are also along with these groups of the lymph nodes, which are named the paratracheal 
lymph nodes. So the efferent pass to the corresponding deep cervical lymph nodes. Corresponding means right onto the right side and left on the left side. So the right paratracheal lymph nodes, they drain onto the right deep cervical lymph nodes and the left paratracheal lymph nodes, they drain to the left deep cervical lymph nodes. Now the infra hyoid and the pre laryngeal and the pre tracheal lymph nodes. Pre means anterior, infra means below. So below the hyoid bone, all the groups they are named as the infra hyoid and pre laryngeal means anterior to the larynx and pre tracheal means anterior to the trachea. So the cricoid cartilage, which is deep to the thyroid cartilage, is the landmark where the trachea starts and the laryngeal muscles they are lying or laryngeal apparatus that is lying. So the lymph nodes which are lying below the infra and below the hyoid bone are named as the infrahyoid, anterior to the larynx are the pre-laryngeal, anterior to the trachea are the pre-tracheal. So these are the lymph nodes which are named accordingly. The infra hyoid, pre-laryngeal and the pre-tracheal lymph nodes lie beneath the deep cervical fascia. So the deep cervical fascia of the neck that covers the neck region and these lymph nodes, they lie along with that. They drain efferent from the anterior cervical nodes and their efferent join the deep cervical nodes. So all these lymph nodes, that is the infrahyoid, pre-laryngeal and the pre lymph nodes. Now, all these which are belonging to this region, that is the infrahyoid just below the hyoid bone, infrahyoid and pre-laryngeal and the pre-tracheal. So this is the trachea, this is the laryngeal region. So all these groups, they are anterior cervical groups and these anterior cervical groups, they are lying covered by the deep cervical fascia. Just beneath them, they are going to drain into the deep cervical lymph nodes partially which are the internal jugular vein and then they drain into. So all these lymph nodes, they are draining into that. So infra higher nodes, they drain efferent from anterior cervical lymph nodes and they are efferent join the deep cervical lymph nodes. So these areas, they are draining into that. Now the infra higher nodes are anterior to the thyroid membrane. Now this thyroid membrane is again extending from the thyroid cartilage lower down in between the first tracheal ring. So this is the thyroid membrane and this thyroid membrane extends lower down in between the thyroid cartilage and the first tracheal ring. So infrared nodes are anterior to the thyroid membrane. Pre-laryngeal nodes lie on the crico vocal membrane and the pre-tracheal nodes lie anterior to the trachea near the inferior thyroid veins. So these are the locations of these three groups of the lymph nodes, that is the infrahyoid, pre-laryngeal, and the pre-tracheal lymph nodes. So these are lying into with these membranes, three membranes, and these three membranes are very important. The thyroid membrane, the crico vocal membrane, and the pre-tracheal membrane. So this is the how they are present. Now the lingual nodes, which belong to the tongue, the lingual nodes are small and inconstant and are situated on the external surface of the hyoglossus. Now this hyoglossus is the muscle of the tongue which starts from the hyoid bone and is inserted into the tongue mass. So glossus means tongue, hyo means hyoid bone, so it is the muscle which extends in between the tongue and the hyoid bone, so the hyoglossus. So the lingual nodes, they lie along the external surface of the hyoglossus muscle and also between the genioglossi. Now genioglossi, we discussed in the mandible, there are the genuine tubercles and there were four genuine tubercles, two superior and the two inferior. From the superior, the genioglossus, they arise and this genioglossi is the muscle of the tongue again 
which extends in between the mass of the tongue and the genian tubercles, which are the superior genian tubercles. So this muscle is extending over there. So this is very important that the iogalosus muscle and the genioglossus muscle. So these lymph nodes, which are the lingual lymph nodes, extends in between them. So they are situated over there. They drain to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. Now we discussed that the tongue is drained through the jugulotrigastric group of the lymph nodes to the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. So this lingual node, which lies in between these two muscles, is draining the tongue also. And this again drains into the upper deep cervical lymph nodes. So this is the end of the uh, lymphatic drainage or the cervical group of the lymph nodes, which are draining the neck and the head region, base of the region or head 